Good morning and welcome back. I am Vijay C. Nair calling from BMAX Academy. BMAX Academy is the center of excellence for IELTS and OET. Hitherto, more than 60,000 students in the last 11 years have come out of with a glorious achievement in OET and IELTS. And we are very proud of that because OET and IELTS, BMAX is synonymous with that test. Well, friends, today I am here to introduce something new. In the forthcoming days, we have made a OET reading and writing tailor-made for you. We find uh, some students find reading difficult, but A, B or C, and uh, writing also. Especially all profession, now BMAX is uh, an institution, we are the only institution that is providing for all specializations. For example, OET doctors, that is medicine, dentists, nursing, physiotherapists, uh, pharmacists, radiologists and uh, which we are giving speech are uh, all the branches. So in all the cases, they, we find the students have difficulty in reading and writing. So we are coming with a, uh, a series of classroom lectures on reading and writing. Now what I would uh, appreciate is, now those who are watching these videos for the first time, now you subscribe it and share it with your friends so your friends are also benefited of it. Make sure that you are making comments. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them to and it will be answered in the next session. Now, uh, make use of this set of videos. Thank you. May God bless you. Don't forget, subscribe and share. Namaste. May God bless you. So, now we are presenting BMAX OET tailor-made to suit your requirements. So, this is an introduction intro video, especially for those who are new to OET. Uh, that will be uh, very safe from my side because um, uh, that serves as a purpose. Well, uh, OET is International English Proficiency Test for Healthcare Professionals. Only healthcare professionals, that is uh, doctors, that is medicine, dentists, then um, uh, nursing, physiotherapists, pharmacists, psych, and uh, 12 branches, including vets. And here, uh, we are giving you a tailored program, uh, just uh, to suit your requirement, and it is not a general one. So, to give you a bird's eye view of what is OET. Now, it is a test, it is a subtest. It has four subtests. The first one is listening, second is reading, third, writing. LRW in the morning session and afternoon it will be for speaking. So, it is a one-day test. Unlike that of uh, IELTS where usually LRW uh, one day and speaking either on the previous day or uh, the next day. But here, everything will be over by a day. So, uh, let us see what is listening. Listening, there are three parts. Part A, Part B, Part C. Uh, part A is for 15 minutes and you have two consultations uh, between a doctor and a patient or between a psychologist and a patient or a physiotherapist and a patient or a radiologist and a patient. And there are 24 questions. Each question carries one mark. 
So that is the first one. That is part A, 15. Part B is uh, short dialects. You have six short dialects. That also for 15 minutes. Six questions, six marks. And part C talks or presentation. Uh, there will be 12 questions uh, lasting for um, 15 minutes and 12 months. That means uh, total 15 plus 15, 45 minutes is for listening. And this listening is supposed to be the easiest module uh, after doing some 10 tests because uh, the uh, listening you have to get ear training. Then it will be easy. Most of our students are getting almost full, that is uh, uh, full mark, 100% mark for uh, listening. Now the second one is reading. It is supposed to be the second um, hardest uh, subtest. The reading, unlike uh, uh, listening, listening is a continuous one, 15, 15, 15. But here, reading is of uh, two tests. The first test is part A. That is, there are uh, uh, 15, uh, 20 questions. Part A, 20 questions. And you have to complete it in 15 minutes. That means less than a minute for each question. And once it is um, over, they'll take the paper. No, 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 don't take. They'll snatch the paper back from you. And uh, then comes uh, paper number two. Uh, that is uh, part B and C together. Part B, you have six questions, six mark. Part C, you have... Uh, uh, Part C, you have uh, 8 plus 8, 16. So there are C part, there is C1 and C2. There are 8 plus 8, 16 mark. So total you have 22 and then uh, you have 45 minutes. That means average 2 minutes for each question. And here, this is very important that uh, uh, part B is MCQ. Both are MCQ, multiple choice. And B is three choice and part C is four choice. Uh, now here it is valued uh, exclusively by computer, computer valuation. You are uh, filling the bubbles. Now those who are listening to me, uh, if you have any question, uh, uh, look down and there you can make some comments and if you have some question, do not hesitate to ask me. That will be answered. If not uh, today, uh, at least uh, the next set, when I come, the next set is tomorrow or day after tomorrow. When I come, I will answer to your question and do not forget because I will be going on talking and you are free to ask questions. So this is a, a whole picture about uh, um, reading. That is, there are two tests, but A, where you are writing. You are using a pencil and write. There are uh, short questions, for example, question 1 to 7 or 6 will be just writing, uh, just based on, uh, that will, will come later. Four texts and which text they are coming from uh, eight or seven or eight onwards, it is going to be your writing short answer questions, that is part A. And B and C is the second test and uh, there you have 45 minutes. Uh, B you have six and C 16 question, that is your reading. Then comes uh, writing. Most students find writing hard. Uh, well, uh, uh, the writing is uh, based on letter writing based on case note. You know what is a case note. Uh, you will be given a case note. And based on the case note, you have to write a letter. Letter can be, the, of course, the next video is going to be on the type of letters. Now it can be, uh, based on the case note, you have to write a letter. So, there are two types. And there are, you have to be careful. You have to write according to the recipient. Means, um, who it can be a medical staff, or it can be a paramedic staff, or it can be non-med staff. So, depending upon which you have to write and the details of which will be given later. Today, just we are seeing um, a, a bird's eye view of it. So, first is, you have to write according to the recipient. Recipient means the reader. 
who is going to be your reader? Your reader can be a medical staff like a physician or a doctor or a nurse or a paramedical staff like a pharmacist, dietitian, physio, or the occupational therapist or non-medical staff like the director uh, or the manager of uh, some institution. So you are going to write according to that. Second one has to be according to the client status. Client status means uh, you have to write according to the uh, patient. That can be, it can be a, a translator or a discharge letter or a referral letter or home reservation or information letter. So these are the letter that this is only a brief outing how, uh, what are the three, four subtests. So L, R, W. And the next one uh, here, letter is your listening and reading, computer evaluation. Listening and reading are computer evaluation. There is only one answer. Whereas when you come to uh, writing and speaking, you can have many answers. If there are 10 students writing, they will write in 10 different ways and therefore it is valued according to something called assessment criteria, a scale in order to give you. There are six scales, purpose, that is why you are writing this letter. That must be given uh, in the beginning. Why you are writing, whomever you are writing, why you are writing, that is a purpose. Second, content. What do you mean by content? The letter, the, your case note contains a lot of information. A lot of information. And uh, you, the, your reader doesn't need all the information. For example, what a gynecologist needs is not a dietitian, is not a dietitian needs. If what a dietitian needs is not a, an ortho needs. So, content must be you read the whole case notes and then select what is, what is, what is relevant and you have to write uh, the only the relevant if you don't write relevant you lose mark and on the other hand if you write any relevant one there you will lose mark so that content then conciseness and clarity that means you have to uh, instead of it is not a beating about the bush instead of that you are coming down and give the essence because these doctors or the healthcare people are very busy people and they don't have the time to read all your uh, stories. Therefore, make it brief and clear. Then next is organization and layout. Organization means, uh, first you write one paragraph, second, uh, that one paragraph will lead to the second, then it will lead to the third, and finally do it, the details of which we will see in the next video. That's called organization, how you are going to organize it and layout. Genre and style. Genre means uh, you have to use the healthcare professional letter. Therefore, instead of using ordinary common layman's language, you are going to use clinical language and there is this, uh, it is an academic essay. So you have to respect the academic level that is called genre, clinical language, polite language and then uh, uh, style. Finally, language. Language here you have to use passive voice, active voice, um, compound descendants, complex sentence, then uh, uh, these are the language they are looking. Then there is negative mark. Spelling, grammar, punctuation, legibility. They will bring you negative mark. And here, so that is um, purpose 3 mark, content 7 mark, conciseness and clarity 7, and uh, organization layout 7, and genre style 7, and language 7. That means 7, 5, 35 plus 3, 38 mark. Total writing, 38 mark. This 38 is converted into a scale of 500. And from which uh, you have to get a minimum 350 to uh, 449 in order to make a minimum B and uh, 450 to 500 is A. And in B max we teach you for A grade. Because it is very important to don't uh, uh, aim at uh, B. If you aim for B, you will not get B. You know you, what you have done in the university level. If you work for a first class, you seldom get first class. So you have to aim for 100 percentile and then uh, it is possible and we are teaching you for that. That is assessment uh, criteria. Now let us see what is purpose. 
Purpose means why you write this letter. These three marks you have. Purpose means why you write this letter. Because you know, I told you already that these uh, medical healthcare people are very busy. You know, you go to a hospital, you can see how many people are in queue. And if you write a letter and they don't have the time, therefore, first you have to write why you write this letter. What is the patient situation, condition? What is it now? Rational for the request. So you have to give a uh, name of the patient and if there is a patient profile, give it. For example, Mr. William, uh, 53 years old. Or you can say a 54 year and you, you say uh, uh, any, uh, what is he by profession? Maybe a tailor, a 53 year old tailor. And uh, what, what is the uh, uh, purpose? Who requires? So that is uh, who requires. Or oh, what it requires, maybe definitive diagnosis and uh, further management. And what is the uh, situation? He, uh, maybe uh, you, uh, you can tell what is his presenting condition. Or uh, presenting condition, uh, you can say he, uh, uh, he requires definitive diagnosis suffering from uh, maybe diabetes or whatever it is. And a rational for the request. Why you want that? If you request assessment, include the reason why it is. If you are definitely diagnosis, why you want a definitely diagnosis? Maybe a suspected case of uh, maybe breast cancer. Suspected case of breast cancer and then uh, you have to include uh, that also. That is the purpose which carries three marks. The second one is content. That is very, very, very important. Uh, here it is uh, many slips happen for students. Number one, appropriate to the reader. That means, what a gynecologist, as I told you earlier, what a gynecologist wants is not a dietitian wants. What a dietitian wants is not a physiotherapist. Wants. So, appropriate to the reader, recipient. Second, include all relevant info. And if you don't include, as I told you earlier, now you will lose mark. And there are a lot of unnecessary things. And not, that is uh, not for, uh, uh, this only a case note. Therefore, don't add any uh, irrelevant material. If you add, then also you lose mark. Don't include any irrelevant info and ensure important details are not missing. That is very important. That is what you mean by content. And content from accurately represented. It should be accurately represented, but not photo. It's not a copy pasting. You have to interpret it. So, content case not accurately represented. I mean, I would like to change that word, not represented. Uh, must be uh, translated. You have to translate that into uh, accurately translate the content. For example, you say what is the temperature they are given? 97 degree. Don't write a temperature was 97. You say whether it is uh, normal or it is lower or it is higher. That is what is required. Not recklessly copy pasting this one. That is the content which carries 7 mark. Then the next one is conciseness and clarity. That means the length appropriate to the conciseness. Don't uh, give a lot of information. Uh, uh, words, it should not be wordy. That is what you mean by conciseness. It should not be wordy. If uh, an idea could be expressed in 10 words, use only 10 words. Don't use 20 words or 15 words. Then it will be wordy. And at the same time, it should not be, uh, if it can be written in 10 words, don't make it 7 words. Then the problem will come and it is called ambiguity. And if it is more, it is called verbosity. Both are not desirable. Then summarize the effectively idea. Take the idea and summarize it effectively. How we can do it will be uh, getting in the next videos onwards. Organization. Organization, paraphrasing appropriate logical order. Now, for example, body. Body of the letter. Now, first there is a, a address part where you write uh, the name of the receiver, then uh, designation, then the address. Skip a line and then you write uh, date, date of the letter. A uh, 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 letter without a date is not valid. Then you write uh, uh, salutation, dear sir or madam, doctor, etc. Then a nurse. Then uh, next you write RE, that line is called RE line. There you have to write the name of the patient in full RE, Mr. or Mrs. or MS or MRS or like that. And then just below that, just below that you write date. 
and a date and uh, 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 maybe date of birth dob if the case may tells you dob write the do there on the other hand if the case not tells you age you write the age and skip a line and from there onwards that is the address part any mistake in the address part is going to cause serious uh, uh, loss of mark so especially the title both of the receiver and the patient and the date and the uh, age and the profession and spelling also no especially uh, there are patients with the name robert and uh, there may there may be patient with yes s also robert sir and william william sir so if you miss one spelling you are changing the patient so you lose the entire mark therefore make sure that when the address part that is address and the date uh, our uh, uh, salutation dear sir ari before you start the body of the letter make sure that everything is clear then only you go to the body body you must have a first para is called the introduction after the introduction you go bp1 bp2 bp3 and usually bp4 and bp are enough and how to organize it we have a next video is going to be that one that is how to organize it because it is very serious and then uh time management that is very very important many students come and tell us sir it was easy but i didn't get the time why why didn't you get the time you have to manage the time now uh, you are writing the case note at the top it is written 45 minute 5 minute is for exclusive plan reading 5 minute at that time you are not supposed to touch your pen or pencil now so first 5 minute you read uh, start reading from the writing task onwards which we will explain later so there you will come to know why you are writing this there are five minute exclusive reading at that time you cannot uh, 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 underline anything then you are left with the 40 minute for writing mind you you don't have 40 minute for writing you have only 30 minute for writing and uh, first you have to plan it that is called organization first 5 minute you can turn the fourth paper fourth side of the paper paper 1 and 2 you are going to write your answer 3 is for the examiner fourth page you can write you have to write organization and the organization say introduction in row what are the jot down the points in 5 minute what are the points you are going to write then bp1 bp2 bp3 how many bp1 and then a conclusion the conclusion must be um, uh, should you have any queries comma do not hesitate to contact me and sign off and that is uh, for 30 minute writing time is 30 minute and if you want to write in 30 minutes you must have a planning if you don't plan it organize it properly you cannot write it in 30 minute if it is done many people think that is a waste of time no 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 it is not a waste of time it is an asset if you can plan it already well then you can write it in 30 minute once it is done that last proof reading 5 minute this is the last 5 minute deciding whether you should get at least a b or below now if you don't do the proof reading make sure that you are not going to get a minimum b so make sure that you are using a uh, management of time is very very crucial Five minute, first five minute reading uh, that is already given to you. Next, you have forty minute. First five minute for planning that is called organizing. Then you have to say a paragraph wise what you are going to write. Make use of that and write this. And this cannot be done. This management is not possible in a day. It's not even in a week. It will take at least you have to write ten letters with your trainer in front of you. telling when is a 5 minute when is a 30 minute and when it is a 5 minute that is organization and layout john rand style that is a gun for sen mark a clinical factual and appropriate john ray of the reader i mean john ray mean type john ray means as a french word which means type what are, what is a is a cardiologist is a physiotherapist is a dentist is he a physiotherapist a dietitian or is he a speech pathologist or is depending on that but you have to clinical language you have to use 
clinical language for example uh, we don't use the word treatment treatment is an ordinary word you say management management and you never use the word patient you have to say mr so and so mr williams or mrs williams and uh, he she never use we will not use the word uh, patient because that is a derogatory word factual and appropriate factual information you have to give that you are giving the temperature factual dosage for example dosage uh, you just you cannot say uh, penicillin or you cannot say paracetamol you say paracetamol what paracetamol what and how much time uh, what is the uh, dosage so and generate to this readers discipline and knowledge so you have to be uh, right according to the readers discipline that means specialization and readers knowledge for example um, in for the nurses uh, social worker you are writing a social worker write a letter to the uh, social worker and suppose the patient is uh, has a myocardial infarction when you if you write the patient suffers myocardial in had a myocardial infarction uh, the social worker does not know what is a myocardial infarction because she is from a different discipline therefore when you are using short form when you are using short form uh, you uh, make sure that the reader knows it whereas uh, you can write tds or um, cued or uh, that uh, the doctors give the do dosage you know tds then you can when you are a doctor is writing a doctor you can write tds but not uh, to others so that is what is called readers discipline finally technical knowledge and uh, uh, abbreviation and uh, knowledge and uh, abbreviation so, and abbreviation finally polite language you cannot order things you have to be uh, you have to be use a genre uh, and uh, that is a polite language you have uh, seven marks the last one is uh, language uh, they faced uh, spelling punctuation grammar and uh, uh, legibility they carry negative mark then sentence structure is very important use complex compound sentences use passive voice not difficult uh, there is a uh, one uh, two videos on that uh, how to write complex and a compound sentence how to write passive voice that will be coming in the due course of time so um, the last uh, the last subject so the lrw is in the morning then you will have a wonderful lunch offered by them and then in the afternoon is sub test 4 speaking speaking uh, you will be given a car they are very good people friendly people and uh, uh, when you go there there will be two cards total 10 minutes so one card a 5 minute and the card they will be giving you a card in which uh, they will be writing what is uh, the problem of the patient what are the questions uh, you have to ask everything will be the examiner plays the role of the patient and you have to do your professional role for example if you are a physiotherapist you have to act like a physiotherapist if you are a dentist you have to play the role of a dentist if you are a nurse you are the nurse you have to play your professional role and i or the examiner is called, not examiner is interlocutor and he will be the patient or the relative the candidate plays his or her professional role and uh, there are 5 uh, minutes but the uh, total time is 20 minute that means uh, 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 card number 1 first 1 minute it is id checking that is for example could you please tell me your name so you tell your name then can you show me your id then uh, make sure uh, to make sure that you are uh, you are taking this test as a medical doctor or as a radiologist am i correct then Uh, that is one minute the next uh, uh, two minute is uh, two to three two minute is for warm up and uh, this warm up is not marked it is to understand each other's voice so they will ask some questions like why do you take it is not marked huh? it is not marked so they ask some questions so know each other's voice they say um, could you please tell me why do you take oet uh, or you are a, a speech pathologist why did you want to become a speech pathologist or um, how did uh, for a nurse they will ask how has nursing changed over the time or to, to the dentist they ask what are the benefits of being a dentist so they will ask uh, for four questions two minute then actual uh, start they will be given the card that is called the role play card in which uh, 
uh, it is written a setting which we will show in the next one. Uh, we have plenty of materials and we will show how you have to do that. And you will be given three minutes for preparation. And you will be given a pencil if you want, you can jot down, you have to. You have to underline the important point and jot down the points. And when it is three minutes, they will tell, now you can start. Now, you play your personal role and I will, or the examiner or the interlocutor will be the patient or the relative. And then you have to five minutes. You, so there will be blood points. What are the things you have to do? You have to ask all this. Uh, all this you have to mark there. And that is, uh, <coughs> that is card number one, which carries 11 minutes. The next card number, immediately after that, they'll give you a second card. There is no introduction. So you have three minutes preparation and five minutes. So total 19 minutes or put it in the right uh, roundup. You can 20 minutes is for speaking. So, and the score, there is a pass mark, fail mark, score, all the sub converted to a scale of 500. You are uh, uh, 42, 42 reading, 42 listening, 42 38, all these are converted into a scale of 500 and 450 to 500 brand A, that is what BMAX is teaching you and 350 minimum. <laughs> Don't, uh, we, we, we are not bothered about your uh, B because if you aim for B, you will not, uh, it is difficult to get it. So, uh, BMAX welcomes you to the next video. Uh, BMAX Academy is an ISO certified. We have seven branches, Mavaram, Chivandram, uh, Kollam, Karnapalli, Attingal, Patranditta, where we offer <coughs> both uh, online and offline classes and we have centers at different parts of India and abroad uh, and uh, uh, more than 60,000, more than 60,000 students have come out with meritorious uh, results through the corridors of BMAX Academy. Now, before we call it a day, uh, one more thing I am now with, uh, we have a, a sister concern uh, uh, started this year, that is BMAX Public School, uh, Catch the Young, that is what uh, we are doing. And uh, finally, uh, thank you. Don't forget uh, uh, to subscribe it and send it to your friend, all these details, right, especially from the next uh, video onwards and uh, down below. You have to, if you have any questions, you can ask me. And uh, BMAX Academy promises English supplement uh, to complement your OET. Best luck. Namaste, we'll see you tomorrow with a, a type of letters. That is second video. Namaste, in the meantime, convey my love and regards to one and all. Thank you.